Yo, Adam Saxton here with Guy in a Cube. Another week, another roundup. And you thought all the updates were announced last week. I've got some news for you. Let's dig in. Megan Longoria's got a blog post talking about her Power BI visuals checklist. She did a talk at Pass Summit 2018 where she talked about the things you need to be aware of when creating your visuals inside of Power BI. As part of that, she also put together a checklist that you can download and review as you make visuals inside of Power BI. This checklist goes through a lot of things that maybe you're not necessarily thinking about or you're aware of. And so this is a good reminder of maybe Maybe some best practices, things that will help the readers of your report to enjoy it better and to analyze the data more efficiently. She also updated this checklist based on some feedback in her past session, so good job. John White's got a blog post talking about Power BI data flows, walking through how to use this, what it looks like, and comparing it a little bit with Power BI Desktop and with Excel. This is a good high level blog post. If you're not familiar with data flows, you can definitely check it out. Data flows seems to be the buzz right now, which is great. But there are definitely things you should consider when using it, especially if you're using it with premium capacity or you're not using it with premium capacity. And John calls a few of those out. You can check out the link to this blog post as well as every other blog post in this roundup, including some bonus items down in the description below. Go check it out. I don't know if you heard, but Analysis Services had its 20th birthday. That's right, it was released with SQL 7.0 in 1998. What were you doing in 1998? The blog post has a video embedded in it as well, and there were a few interviews as part of the video to help celebrate and remember the journey that Analysis Services has gone through. If you haven't seen it, be sure to check it out. It's really good stuff inside of it, just going through memory lane. There are new AI capabilities inside of Power BI. This is a new announcement, and there are items relating to cognitive services as well as Azure machine learning. And if you wanna take advantage of those Azure capabilities directly inside of Power BI, there is a preview that you can sign up. There's a link at the bottom of this blog post that you can go sign up for the preview and start taking advantage of these items and give feedback to the product team so that they can make this really awesome for everyone else. This blog post does a quick overview of what those capabilities are, so be sure to check out the blog post for more information. And if you're excited about these upcoming AI capabilities in Power BI Desktop, go ahead and leave hashtag AI down in the comments below, let me know. What's another month without a new Power BI desktop? The November 2018 release is available for you to download. There are a ton of features inside of this release, which makes it really exciting. First off, one of the most anticipated items is the ability to copy and paste visuals from one Power BI desktop file to another. Expand and collapse items inside of the matrix visual is now available in the November 2018 release. This gets you even closer to pivot tables. You can also toggle whether or not the plus minus icon is there next to the items. There is a new filtering experience. This is a specific filtering experience used for the consumers of the report, but you can see what that would look like inside of Power BI Desktop. As an author of the report, you'll still have that old filter pane that was available for you that gives you tight control over it, but the new filter experience gives you the ability to scale down what your end report consumers will see. So it gives you a little tighter experience over what that consumption item looks like. There's a new modeling view that's available inside of Power BI Desktop as well. This lets you do things with large amounts of tables and relationships. You can create different views of those relationships, so a smaller pared down version, as well as the capability to do display folders inside of your model, which is awesome. There's also a blog post down in the description below that goes a little deeper into the new model view, so be sure to check that out as well. There were other items in this blog post, so be sure to read the full update to understand everything that's in this month's version, and also be sure to check out the preview features options inside of Power BI Desktop to take full advantage of every item. All right, I wanna pass this off to you. What was your favorite item this month? Go ahead and let me know down in the comments below. If you like this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up, smash it if you so desire. If it's your first time here, hit that subscribe button. And as always from both Patrick and myself, thank you so much for watching. Keep being awesome, and we'll see you in the next video.